They're something you see every day numerous times but never really notice. They always have an influence on how you read and write. These are typefaces and fonts. If you look around wherever you are right now and see any form of logo or text on a page, you can bet that someone chose that font specifically to grab your attention, or look professional, or make some sort of statement. There are plenty of fonts out there that were designed by companies to be memorable, but there are also those common fonts we see constantly that are used in much more versatile ways. Today on List, we'll be looking at a couple of them and seeing just how they came to be. Number 6. Impact Designed by Jeffrey Lee and released by the Stevenson Blake Foundry, Impact was destined to be the poster child of all internet-related fonts from the start. According to Lee, he created this typeface to get as much ink on the paper as possible in a given size. And he wasn't kidding. Impact from a typographical standpoint is extremely condensed. Not only are the letters bold and in your face, but the X height, the term used to show the differences in height between lowercase and uppercase letters, is very high. In the early 2000s, succeeding the dawn of the internet, it became a very popular practice to caption pictures with funny or clever things. According to Something Awful founder Richard Kiyanka, I believe the first time the font face was changed to impact was when somebody posted an image of a very obese black woman wearing a spandex superhero outfit, and the text just said, Damn! After that, everybody just seemed to use impact. Something Awful wasn't just the first documented use of impact, however. It also showcased the first popularized meme to use the typeface. This was the now well-known picture of a British short hair cat with the caption, I can has cheeseburger? And since then, Impact and its partner the cat have been the godfather of all other derivative memes and image sharing websites. Number 5. Wingdings. There was probably a moment in your home computer owning life where you decided to check out all the fonts Microsoft Word had to offer. And so you clicked on each and every font that looked interesting and mashed random gibberish onto the poor keyboard. You hit the bottom and laid your eyes on wingdings, only to find an unsatisfying pile of symbols with no apparent pattern. Have you ever wondered what its purpose actually is? To put it simply, there isn't one. But wingdings and webdings designers Charles Bigelow and Chris Holmes designed it back in 1985 as a homage to dingbats, otherwise known as printer's ornaments or printer's characters. These were fonts that only included symbols and designs meant for surrounding lines of text in the days where books were printed manually using the printing press. Wingdings, therefore, is a number of symbols used to mimic that same practice. However, after the September 11th attacks in 2001, Wingdings was thought to have a secret message hidden in it. According to the conspiracy, typing out the letters Q33NY in Wingdings, in reference to the name of the plane that crashed into one of the towers, reveals a symbol of a plane, two symbols that look like towers, and a skull and crossbones followed by the Star of David. Of course, this is both a hoax and a coincidence, because the numbers on the respective planes that crashed were N334AA and N612UA, and Q33 was probably spread as the number because of the image it brought. Number 4. Times New Roman In 1931, a designer named Victor Lardent was commissioned by the London newspaper The Times to create a new, more interesting font to replace the antiquated-looking Didone. So, using the power of typography, Lardin's Times New Roman had smaller serifs, which are the decorative little notches on letters, the spacing was made to be more condensed and economic on the page, and the strokes making each letter had much more contrasting sizes to make it appear more eye-popping and crisp. Thus, the name for this typeface describes exactly what it is. A new typeface for the Times, based on the Roman style, which is a type of font that mimics letters carved into Roman statues and architecture. Another interesting fact about Times New Roman is that in 2004, the U.S. Department of State made it official that all their official documents would be typed in double-spaced 12-point Times New Roman. In other words, it's pretty likely you could sneak one into Mrs. Hallbecker's stack of 9th grade essays and she'd probably never notice she just created a national diplomatic document. Number 3. Clearview It's pretty important to be able to read every sign you come across while driving. One single misread or disheveled sign and you'll find yourself in Conshohocken instead of Conewago. Luckily, the Federal Highway Administration created Highway Gothic specifically to be read visibly and clearly no matter what condition you drove in. By the 1940s, however, someone decided to edit the seemingly pristine typeface for a newer, even more perfect one. This was Clearview, created by researchers in the FHWA with help from the Texas and Pennsylvania Transportation Institute. Clearview looks fairly similar to Highway Gothic, but there are a few important differences. The letters were all spaced closer together, the spaces inside letters, also known as counters, were bigger, and its X height was higher. When initial tests were done pitting the two typefaces against each other, it was found that Clearview was 2-8% to more readable, with its signs being able to be read about 6% further away. That sounds great, of course, but over time it was found that these tests were skewed. Why? 
Because the signs written in Highway Gothic were just old signs that the researchers decided to use, and Clearview signs were all completely new. In fact, it was actually found that some signs written in Clearview had worse visibility. And so nowadays, the United States has an odd mishmash of the two styles, with between 20 and 30 states still using Clearview as their standards. The Federal Highway Administration has become so tired of making signs in Clearview, though, that as of January 2016, they automatically reject any request to approve Clearview signs. Number 2. Helvetica The king of all fonts came to be in 1957 Switzerland. In the town of Munkenstein, a man named Mac Miedinger, working at the Haas-type foundry, created Helvetica in an attempt to jump on the ever-growing bandwagon that sans-serif typefaces were becoming the more popular choice among designers. What Miedinger didn't know was that over the next 50 years, Helvetica would come to be the absolute standard of fonts in the 20th century. Originally called Neue Haas it was renamed to Helvetica in 1960, which is a Latin translation of the word Swiss. After its creation, the typeface was sold to the American typeset giant Linotype, who licensed it to Apple, Adobe, and Xerox with the confidence that it would be revolutionary and incredibly versatile. Indeed, during the end of the 20th century, Helvetica came to be used in all sorts of things. The London Underground signs, US tax forms and television ratings, and even the words of NASA's space shuttle. So why is it so great? When you look at Helvetica by itself, it really doesn't give any hint of leaning towards any one emotion. It's not flashy, fancy, or in any way descriptive. It's completely neutral and thus able to be used almost anywhere. Number 1. Comic Sans You knew it was coming. Comic Sans is by far the most well-known of any typeface out there, and not just because it's interesting or revolutionary. People hate Comic Sans. It was originally created by Vincent Conair, who was inspired by the children's computer program Microsoft Bob. In it, there was a cartoon dog named Rover who was supposed to give a friendly vibe to children. However, instead of having some sort of fun and playful font filling up his speech bubbles, he was pinned with the boring and business-like Times New Roman. Conair found this to be completely out of place, and so he designed Comic Sans with the intent of using it for informal and playful use. When Microsoft picked it up and released it in their Windows 95 package, it became a prominent font in the following packages from then on. So why exactly do people hate it? The most likely reason is because it was once the font of choice for inexperienced web designers during the early days of the internet. Instead of appearing subtle and professional with their site, Comic Sans and its simplistic and formal look made it appear inappropriate, and this bothered scores of real designers. Nowadays, it's more of a joke than anything else, and though it gets so much hate from the masses, Comic Sans has an actual claim to fame. Thai Beanie Babies all have tags with words written in the typeface, and the popular computer game series The Sims has fonts that are all based upon it. So despite being just another internet punching bag, Comic Sans is still a worthy and applicable font. Well, it's time for the list honorable mention. There aren't really any typefaces out there that don't fit in the category of typefaces in general, but I did come across one lesser known one that I think deserves some note. Minuscule was designed by Thomas U. Merchand, and its sole purpose is to be more legible than other fonts, specifically its sizes smaller than 7 point font. The idea is that as type gets smaller, certain aspects of letters need to be more exaggerated to be seen. So the six fonts of minuscule progressively have wider corners, the descenders on letters like G and P get shorter, and the spaces get wider. When we hit minuscule de, the smallest font, each letter becomes incredibly simplistic and looks almost robotic when enlarged, but completely readable at two-point font for which it was made. Thanks for watching this episode of List! If you have any topics of things you want me to count down, or have an original song you'd like me to put in the background of a future video, leave it in the comments or email me at stuffyouprobablywondered at gmail.com. Also in the comments, share with everyone what your favorite typeface is, and what you might design if you had the ability to make your own. Either way, I'll see you next time on List.